Okay, I've had the Motorola Zoom for a couple of days now, and I wanted to share with you some of my opinions and review on the device. Now, first thing, it's in a sleep mode right now, so in order to bring it out of a sleep mode, you obviously press the power button. I actually like where the power button's placed. It's on the back of the device, right here, in the upper left-hand corner. So if you're holding it in landscape mode, the button is right under or near your left index finger. If you're holding it in portrait mode, the button is under or near your right index finger. So I'm going to press the power button and bring it out of a sleep mode. And I get greeted with my lock screen here. On the lock screen it tells you the time and the date. And then you have over here, to unlock it, you just grab the lock here. And you just got to bring it out of the circle here. Okay. Let me see if I can fling this out. <laughs> All right, now this is the home screen here. Obviously you can customize it. That's one of the great things with Android. You can customize it the way you want it. So you can put your apps wherever you want. You can put any widget anywhere that you want. And you have five home screens here. Now as with anything, the device has strong points and weak points. We're gonna cover some of the weak points right off the bat here and get them out of the way. First thing is, obviously you probably heard the device does not support flash right now. But supposedly that's coming within a couple of weeks. So let me show you how the device currently handles flash. I'm going to bring up my browser here by clicking on my browser shortcut. And I already have my YouTube page brought up here. Now, these are all my videos and I'm going to bring one of them up. I'm going to click on it. It's a uh, Motorola Zoom benchmarks on the device here. Check it out if you're interested. Now you get, you're presented with two options here. You have a YouTube app option to watch the video in, and you can easily watch the video in there no problem, and I'll show you that later. But if you watch the video in the browser, you're going to be using Flash. So I'm clicking on the browser selection there. And what I'm greeted with here, it says, you need to upgrade your Adobe Flash Player to watch this video. Download it from Adobe. All right, let me download it from Adobe. And I'm greeted with this screen here. It says Adobe Flash Player. Adobe Flash Player is not yet available for your tablet. Please check the Android market soon for availability for your device. So hopefully soon means a couple of weeks, but at least Flash is coming to the device. So it's just a matter of time before it does. Now from your main home screen here, you can enter into a control panel of sorts. You can do that by either hitting the plus button in the upper right hand corner there or doing a long press on the background itself. You get this little control panel and in it you have widgets, app shortcuts, wallpapers and more. Now I'm going to get into the widgets later because there's a lot of great widgets on here. But there is one on here that doesn't work and I just highlighted it recently in one of my videos for the Motorola Atrix phone and that was the Sense Analog Clock. Now that mimics the Sense UI from HTC phones, which is probably one of the more popular Android skins, and it gives you a clock that gives you a lot of information. It gives you the weather, it gives you information about your device on it. I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna send it up to one of my home screens up here, okay? So I'm gonna click on it and sends it straight to my center home screen. Now these are the options here for the widget itself. I'm just gonna scroll down and go straight to the default on it just to show you this. And I'm gonna to go to the home screen where it was dumped onto, right up here. Now you'll notice that the app isn't really compatible with this device yet. So normally this widget would be maybe about twice or three times its size. So there's stuff on the top missing, there's stuff on the bottom missing. So it's really not compatible yet. But you can download these things from the Android market even though it's not fully compatible. So that's somewhat of a, of a drawback on the device right now. I'm gonna grab this and as always, you can remove any widgets or apps by just bringing it over here to what is your app tray here, but it's a little remove garbage can over there. Now I'm gonna enter into that control panel again. This time I'm gonna try the plus button up here. And we're gonna go into the app shortcuts here just to show you really quick. I'm gonna get into this in a little bit, but these are all your apps here and uh, you can dump them onto your home screens by just tapping on them and it'll shoot up there, but I'll get into that later. Next thing is wallpapers. Now you have the option here with the gallery to use any picture you've taken or loaded onto the device as your background. Then you have live wallpapers here and then regular wallpapers here. Live wallpapers, I'm gonna cover that real quick. 
not all of them are formatted for the larger screen, so they don't work. Now Galactic Core Free, which is the background I have currently on there, it scales up nicely. It was a phone background and it scales up beautifully for this device here. A couple other ones do as well. But the Chinese Zodiac Live wallpaper, which is one of the wallpapers I've highlighted in previous videos, doesn't work so well. And that's what it's going to look like if I set the wallpaper here. So I'm going to just go back to the home screen. You just get a little square and I'm getting some artifacting here on the side too which I haven't seen before up until this demonstration right here. So it's not fully compatible. This background, this wallpaper is not fully compatible. Now some of these things, some of these apps that I have, have actually been imported when I started up the device. When I synced the Motorola Zoom to my Gmail account, it brought in a lot of the apps that I already had downloaded on my Nexus One phone. So a lot of them were imported but you can also get some of these incompatible apps in the Android market. Let's switch the background back to something else that will work. Earthrot. Earthrot is Earth Rotation. I actually did a full video on it about a year ago and it works beautifully with this device here. It scales up nicely. Now that's Earth there obviously but you can change that to whatever you want. You can remove the moon, you can change it to any planet in the solar system. You could do fantasy planets like Star Wars, planets from Avatar, Transformers, things of that nature, but I'm just going to, for expedience sake, just use it like this. Now before I forget, there's one other wallpaper I do want to cover because I really like it and it's just so close to working but it doesn't work. Live wallpapers here, it's called Honeycomb Wallpaper. Update. Just as I'm telling you how this background doesn't work with the device and it's not formatted for the screen, I get an update and it's fixed. Look at this. Perfect, no problems. So that just goes to show you, Google Earth was fixed and this background was updated within the time that I was making this video. So many of the shortcomings, which are just software related, basically, are being fixed and being fixed fairly quickly. I mean, this device has only been on the market for, I think today's the fourth day now. So they're rapidly fixing things and I just see a bright future for Android tablets and Honeycomb tablets in general. All right, that's it for the shortcomings. I wanted to get that out of the way because I wanted to get to the good news because there's plenty of it. This is the first ever tablet to have a dual core processor in it. It's got a front and rear facing camera. It's very well built. It's got a, a good solid feel to it. And I love the options that are available on it. It's very customizable, like I said before. A lot of the widgets are great on here and I hope that these transfer over to the phones as well because I really like them. Now right here you have your clock widget which is a simple clock that gives you the, the readout of the time here. But if you click on it, you can actually set an alarm on it, which I like that. Now there are a lot of other great widgets that ship with the device. One of which is the YouTube widget over here. Now if you have your Google account on the device linked up to a YouTube account, it'll show all of the videos that you subscribe to right up here or all this, the channels you subscribe to, their new videos that they have up. Now if you don't have your device linked up to a YouTube account, what you would see up here are just the most popular videos at that point in time on YouTube and you can just scroll through them by flicking downward. Really cool. Another widget that's really similar to that is the book widget right up here. It shows you all the books that you have on the device and you can just scroll through them to choose which one you want. Now that's really cool, that way you don't actually have to get into the book app on the device to jump to a book that you want. So it kind of takes a step out of the process and makes things quicker. Another similar widget is the bookmark widget. Now I have a previous video that I posted how you can sync your Chrome bookmarks to the device, which I've already done here. But these are all my bookmarks that are on my desktop as well, and you can just scroll through them and then jump straight to it. So I'm going to just jump straight to Amazon here and there we go. I'm right on the web page. I don't have to enter in the browser and again it just takes a step out of the process. Makes things quicker. Now another great feature on the device that Android users are going to be familiar with is the voice search. Now up here in the upper left hand corner you have your search, your Google search where you can type in whatever you want or you have your mic there which would do a voice search. 
and you can search for anything or even give the device commands. Now one of the things that I forgot to uh, mention or I overlooked in my unboxing is that the device has a mic on it. It's actually down on the bottom here. You can see right there it's just that pinhole right there. So that allows you to do voice chat on the device. If you wanted to you could do the video chat over Gmail which you would use the front facing camera here for and then the mic of course. Or, like I said, you could give it voice commands. I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to click on the mic up here. Email. I really love my new honeycomb tablet. So what it did is it brought up an email to the email address that's linked to the tablet. And in the body of the text here, or in the body of the email, it shows... I really love my new honeycomb tablet. It's amazing. It's great. Now a lot of the things on this device make things quicker for you. As you notice right there, I didn't have to open my email app and then type out I really love my new honeycomb tablet. I just spoke it in and within seconds it was up and ready to go. All I have to do now is just put who I want to send it to and send it off. Now we're going to quickly cover the apps on the device here. I'm just going to go to the app tray up here. And what you'll notice here is these are all your apps. Now they scroll from side to side now instead of up and down. I kind of like the up and down better where it sort of looked like it was on a spool, but this is nice too. Now you'll notice on the far right here, you'll see some outlines over there. That's basically just telling you that there's another page of apps and they fill in as I bring it over. Okay, and the same is true when I bring it over here. I have the outlines of the last row of apps from the first page here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the Android market over here. So I'm going to click on that. And what you'll notice here is the first section here are the Android apps for tablets. These are the apps that are formatted for this device. So you know that they're going to work on here. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, it brings up 16 apps that you can use on the device. Right now, that's all that's available, the 16 apps. But you can bet that more are coming. Remember, this device is just about three or four days old. So as time goes on, people are going to write more apps for the device, and it's just going to go up from here. If you have any question or, or concerns about it, just think back to the Android Marketplace uh, on the phones, how that exploded. So don't worry, they're on the way. Now there's a couple things I'm just going to download here to show you the notification area. Okay, I downloaded a couple of things from the Android market, and the reason I did that is because I wanted to show you the notification area down here in the lower right-hand corner. If you click on it, it brings up your basic settings on here, so you can enter in your settings to change things on the device. It has your wireless here and your battery power left, and then it gives you your date and time. It also gives you all your notifications down here. So if you have a new email, it'll come down here. If, like I showed you here, I downloaded something from the Android market, it shows you that it was successfully downloaded. You can X out of these things to clear up your notifications there. Anything that would come in your, if you're familiar with an Android phone, anything that would come on the top shade, your notifications, now come in the lower right-hand corner over here. Now another thing that's new here is the multitasking button down here in the lower left hand corner. You'll notice that it brings up the last five things that you've done and it also gives you a screenshot of that so you can remember where you were at. So if you wanted to you could jump back to the Android market and this is the last thing I downloaded from there. Now interestingly enough as I was doing this video there's one thing that I was going to put in the drawback section of it, which was Google Earth, because it wouldn't work on the device. But as I was doing this video, I got an update to Google Earth, and it actually works now. So here you go. Google Earth, fully functional on the Motorola Zoom, which is really cool. Now you can manage your apps in a lot of ways. Like I said before, it's very customizable. You can just grab whatever you want from your home screens here and put it back into the app tray if you want, if you don't want it here. But don't forget they're always there. You can uninstall them by going to your settings and managing your apps. Now the apps here, you can, if you want to put them on your home screen, you can just grab one of them and move it down to whatever home screen you want down here. So you see that you have your five home screens here. You can just drop this on whatever one you want and it'll appear there. Okay, that's one way to do it. Now another way to do it, 
would be in that control panel area I showed you before. So you just long press on here and you go to your app shortcuts here and you can just grab an app and just place it in whatever home screen that you want. Okay, And you can scroll over and it'll move over to the right or to the left or however you want it and you just drop it there. Very easy, very simple, very straightforward. Now one thing that's new with Honeycomb are fragments, app fragments. Now I'm going to bring up YouTube to illustrate this a little bit better. This is your YouTube video wall here, which just gives you all the videos of people that you subscribe to if you have a YouTube account and the most popular videos up there. Or if you don't have a YouTube account, it'll just give you the most popular videos. Now I'm just going to go search up here and I'm going to go to my own channel on here. And these are all the videos that I have posted up. All right, now I'm going to bring up one of my videos here just to show you two things. Number one, that YouTube works on the device perfectly. It just doesn't work within the browser because it uses Flash. But through the YouTube app, it works beautifully. It's going to play right up here in a second, no problem. This is actually a video I took with the device of a, of a deer crossing a frozen lake. Check it out if you're interested. But uh, one thing I really want to show you here are app fragments. Now, if you don't know what app fragments are, uh, basically, they're parts of an app that make a full app. Now, this is a full app here because the screen size is large enough to show you all the pieces of the app. You've got one fragment over here, which are selections of videos. Then you have another fragment over here, which is the video and the description below it. So this device is large enough that you can actually show all the fragments on it. If you're using a cell phone, you would just have one of the fragments and then another fragment. When you click on, let's say you clicked on one of the videos, then the next fragment, fragment would pop up here. So that's what app fragments are. It basically allows the same operating system to be used on a large screen device like this or on a smaller screen device like a cell phone. So in future iterations of Android, which I believe Ice Cream Sandwich will be the one that merges the tablet OS with the phone OS. Fragments will allow that same operating system to run on both devices. So that way you're not going to have a tiny device with all this information on it. You would just have one of the fragments on it. So that pretty much is just describing fragments for you. All in all, I think this is an excellent device and I would definitely recommend it to anybody who is interested in a tablet. This is a very versatile device. You can do a lot with it. And it is actually something that can possibly replace a laptop if you're so inclined that you want to carry around a small device. Once Flash is supported on the device, it's going to be a definite alternative to a netbook. Plus it has the cool factor of the touch screen and, and Android apps and, and just the portability of it. It's not going to replace your desktop or your main laptop. But it is an excellent device for anybody who is looking to have a small device on the go, to consume media, to be able to produce things. And uh, like I said, it's, it's a good netbook alternative, and I would definitely recommend it. So all in all, I'm really happy with the purchase. Feel free to leave comments down below, questions. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And that's pretty much it for this video. Stay tuned for more videos. I'm going to have a couple other videos on the Motorola Zoom shortly. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time.